It's December and it's cold. I'm gonna wear a wetsuit while doing this demonstration. So when I was a kid, from the ages of five to 11, I swam in the pool and actually practiced swimming every day. Eventually I got too robust and it created too much drag and I could no longer compete because I didn't have a competitive advantage due to the way that I am configured. Be easy on the critiques with the form because I haven't done this in many years. Like I said, since I was 12. I do want to try the different strokes again to see, again, what it's what my body feels like when it's swimming, what my joints feel like while I'm swimming, what my spine feels like when I'm swimming. So I'm going to try uh, to see if I can remember these techniques without making too much of a fool out of myself, which is probably too late. I've already done that. <laughs> oh, great. Now I can't hear myself. Now as a chiropractic physician, I have a much different perspective of the body and the spine, obviously, than I did when I was 12. I am going to try to attempt to break down swimming into its elements. Let's begin. Oh, it's so cold. Alright, I can do this. It's got to be at least like 50 degrees in here. Right. It's always the belly button. I want to be able to advise my patients on the importance of rehabilitation in the water, but how can I do that properly without obtaining my own perspective? Disclaimer, please consult with your own medical physician before starting any physical exercise. Thank you. A good way to test the waters is to simply tread water. If this hurts, stop. Don't continue. I mean, this is the basic swimming technique. If you're okay with this and feel comfortable, continue with some basic swimming strokes, like a frog kick, to ease yourself into it. It's cold! Oh. I feel claustrophobic. You just gotta get your war body warmed up. Like, Hector's enjoying it. <laughs> Something oh yeah, it is cold. I've gotten fat. <laughs> oh my god. This is more like cryotherapy. It's so cold. Don't stay still. Keep moving. I'm gonna do some laps. Okay. This is cold. Yeah. Maybe the wetsuits. This is just heavy, the sweatsuit. I'm struggling. This is terrible. Like, Hector, are you okay? Yeah, you're fine. Oh. <laughs> you did it. Okay, I finally got it. hard to breathe every third stroke in order for your neck to move both ways. Grunting. Ugh, it's cold. <laughs> We're gonna start swimming, start with brush stroke because it's just a lot easier on your lungs and on your body. So what's breath stroke? You come in like this, and you push, and you're doing a frog kick. <laughs> I think he did it.
your hands aren't correct in the water and then scooping the water, you will just be doing breaststroke in place. You're not going to get any place if you don't have proper hand movement. So you have to have the flexibility in your thoracic spine to push yourself forward. And then back up. I'm having a hard time not noticing my own pelvic and shoulder misalignment here. Elephantitis. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try. <laughs> if I put my fins on, okay, I can get a quad exercise while doing the dolphin. Good. Get a good lower back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't judge me. <laughs> suddenly remembered how important it is to kick in order to propel yourself forward. I'd forgotten to do so the first half of this. This means you need good knees and hips in order to drive yourself forward. As a chiropractor, I believe that a pelvic imbalance combined with atlas laterality will inhibit the swimmer's ability to swim in a straight line, thus decreasing the speed and increasing the workforce of the stroke. In addition, thoracic mobility, which you hear me talk about all the time with my patients, is vital in order to propel the swimmer forward through the water. Pelvic motion anterior to posterior and vice versa contribute to the propulsion of the body. I feel the burn as the fins are contributing to more recruitment of my quadricep muscles. This is if you want to develop arm strength, okay, some resistance. It does make you feel like you're going to fly. Increased pelvic motion equals more leg power, thus less need for the arms and shoulders to strain. If you have good shoulders but poor knees, the reverse is also true. Thus, you could think of swimming as dividing the body into two sections, upper and lower. However, the ability of the cervical spine to extend for the eyes to gaze forward is beneficial for the health of the spine. If, if I had a disc injury, I wouldn't be wearing the flippers. I wouldn't be doing any of it. Okay. Just straight up, take off the flippers, take off everything, and just slowly tread water. Just my personal opinion, but if my lower back was injured and I had, I couldn't walk that well, I was having radiating symptoms, I definitely think treading water and just gentle leg movements in the water would help. Yeah. The fins are more for like power and strengthening. The getting out part that you'd have to be extremely careful with, I would almost use the steps to slowly get out. Uh -huh. and slowly increase gravity because your body is buoyant. It's buoyant here and sure it takes the pressure off of the joints, but then what happens when you get out of water? Uh, you know. It's the thumbnail. My back. Back. Look at my back. <laughs> I used to be able to do flips. I don't think I can do them anymore. As with anything in life, you need to practice it over and over, and over, and over. After about two hours of swimming, my muscles finally reconnected the old pathways in the brain, and I could remember somewhat how I used to swim.
The lumbar spine assumes a relaxed and lordotic position while swimming, which is also beneficial for the spinal structures and combats rounded forward posture. The hardest task for the swimmer will be to engage the thoracic spine in swimming motions, as the rib cage is a rigid structure, and the lumbar and cervical spine are all too happy to accomplish its lack of motion. Once you've mastered the strokes and feel comfortable, I personally would work on mobilizing the thoracic spine the most. Thoracic meaning mid-back. Careful not to raise the shoulders while swimming, as this will compress the thoracic outlet and pinch the brachial plexus, which feeds and innervates the arms. Overall, swimming is an excellent low impact sport when mastered and improves cardiovascular health and circulation while being gentle on the joints and cartilage. There are those who claim studies show that it improves mood and sleep. However, this could just be a little bit of extra sunshine, vitamin D, or just the effect of added exercise making you more sleepy. My mental well-being is in general improved in and of itself. Not having swam regularly in 20 years brings back some nostalgia of my childhood and remembering what it felt like to be able to swim like a fish for hours in the pool. After spending an hour in the pool swimming laps, and after my body temperature warmed up, I could feel the general muscular tension leave my body. It was a pleasant feeling. So I don't think I'm going to be attempting diving diving today. <laughs> but I'll attempt a cannonball. I can break my butt, just not my neck. <laughs> <laughs> and then be gracious. I don't remember if I don't do it well. Towards the latter part of my swim, I had a general pleasant feeling wash over me. I didn't feel extremely exhausted, which is usually my goal at the end of an exercise routine. Let me know in the comment section below how you feel in the pool. Would you consider taking up a sport such as swimming? Until next time, everyone, have a wonderful day. Swimming is way more involved than I remember, but it's great fun. <laughs> <laughs>